Hello and welcome to Northern Soul Journeys in the Long Hill Homestead. Today we're bringing you the next installment in the Dog Mushing Basics series and I'm trying to fight for your attention with the noise of the chickens. We are going to show you today how to make your own neck lines, tug lines, safety lines, and how you can use this for some other applications in your dog mushing equipment. So let's get started. that make dog mushing equipment often sell necklines and tug lines already made and ready to go. But there are lots of reasons to make them yourself. One is that it can be cheaper. If you have a larger kennel, buying this material either by the spool or by the meter will be cheaper and it can be worth it. Also, you might have a creative idea of something that isn't a standard neckline or tug line, and so having the material around to try out some new things can be really fun. Or you're like me and you just really like making things. So here we make our own necklines, we make tug lines, safety ropes, anchor lines, anything made from these materials, we do it ourselves. Let's have a quick look at the items that we will be making and what they're used for. The neckline is what attaches the dog's collar to the gang line, which is that line that runs through the center of the team. The tug line is what attaches the dog's harness to the gang line, and this is where all that force is coming from for the dog. This is a safety line. It's a long rope that is usually attached to the gang line, and then the other end is tied around a tree. These are really important when you don't have a good anchor hold or your brake system, your parking brake system on your rig is not strong enough to hold your team back. This will secure your team and make sure they're not gonna leave without you. The anchor line is what attaches your anchor to your gang line. This is a really great thing to make yourself because you might have a very personal length that you want to be able to reach your anchor at. And depending on what sled you drive, you might need a very specific length. So this is something we make ourselves as well. Today, we'll be showing you how to make your own lines, which is also known as splicing or fitting, with two different types of rope. The first one we'll be looking at is this polyethylene rope. It is a braided rope, and it's really easy to work with, but it's also really easy for dogs to chew. The next one we'll be looking at is much tougher. This is a Dyneema rope, also braided, and a little bit harder to work with, but we use these for the necklines because it takes a lot longer for the dog to chew through them. All right, let's start with making a tug line. We're going to use the polyethylene rope, which is really easy to work with and a great starting point. Our tug lines measure about 120 centimeters or 47 and a quarter inch or so. In order to make these, you will need some material, a knife to cut it, a splicing or fitting tool, and a lighter or a candle to melt the ends. You will also need something to measure the material. A tape measure works really well. What we have done is we've made this board with a screw to mark the ends. This is great if you're gonna make a large batch of things. It makes it really quick and easy, but definitely not necessary. If you don't have a template, you might wanna have a marker handy to mark on the rope where you will actually be splicing it. For a standard 120 centimeter tug line, start by measuring 154 centimeters length of rope. Using your knife, or alternatively scissors, cut the rope. While not necessary, it's really useful to melt the end of the rope. This is going to keep it from fraying and it's gonna make it really easy to work with. Now that you've got your material, we're ready to start splicing. With my template, I simply stretch the line around the ends, making sure that it's relatively even on both sides and start splicing from there. 
If you don't have a template, here's another way to do it. Fold the length of rope in half. This will be the center point of your tug line. Half of 120 centimeters is 60. Holding the folded end at the 60 mark, reach the line out to the end of the measuring tape and use a marker to mark that point. That mark will be the end of your tug line on either side. Folding though at that mark, you want your loop to measure about five centimeters. So with the fold at the end of your tape measure, mark about five centimeters in on your rope. This little ditty, I suppose, is what I always use in my head to remember the order of operations to make a line. And that is in through the long, out through the short. So I'm going to be weaving my rope in through the long end of the material and I'll be weaving it back out through the short. Using the splicing tool, open a hole in the middle of the rope. Take your shorter end and pull it through. Keeping that five centimeter hole, holding with your thumb and forefinger. With the splicing tool again, push a hole open through that short end. With the other end of the material, weave it back through. Making sure that everything is going in the same direction and everything is nice and flat, pull tight, and now it's a nice solid ring. This material we're gonna weave into the body of the longer rope here so that it's nice and hidden. To do this, we'll take our splicing tool and open the center of the rope itself. Taking your small little tail, push it into that opening And now it's hidden, really nice looking. Now for the other side, we're gonna do the same thing. Fold at that marked point and measure five centimeters down. This step will start off the same as the first, and that's going in through the long end. Push your splicing tool through the rope and take your small tail and put it through the hole. Now, we're going to take this loop and we're gonna put it through this side. So again, just under that five centimeter mark, we're gonna open another hole and take this through here. This part can be a little tricky, especially if you're using a larger rope. Pull that through. and pull it nice and tight. Again, taking the tail and hiding it in the tug line, push open a hole through the body of the actual rope and slide it in. And that's it, as simple as that. All right, now we're going to move on to necklines. The material that we use for our necklines is this Dyneema rope. We'll need some different tools for this one. What I'm using to work with this rope is these Selma brand splicing tools. For the four millimeter Dyneema rope, I'm using a 5.5 tool as well as a four millimeter tool. I'm also using this small piece of rope um, which is very strong, and this will become apparent why later, but I just need one small piece. Instead of melting the ends, I'll be using tape. I do use a knife to cut the rope, and again, if you don't have a template, you can use a marker. 
This material does not melt the same way as the polyethylene rope, so it's really important to use tape at the ends to avoid that fraying of the material. We're gonna start off by making the neckline the same way that we made the tug line. Folding the piece of rope in half and doing half of 32 centimeters, which is 16, will mark the end. And this is where the end of our fold will be. Folding at that mark. I actually make the holes for our necklines a little bit smaller, about four centimeters. Mark at that four centimeter mark. Using the 5.5 millimeter tool, push open a hole just underneath that mark that you made. The method for weaving, splicing, um, is the same. We're going to take the short end and put it through the long end first and then take the long end back through the short. Again, still using that 5.5 tool. And keeping all the ropes going the same direction, we're going to pull it nice and tight. In order to get this tail into the body, I find it much easier to use the smaller tool. And to do this, we're going to actually pierce through the center again. Again, we're trying to avoid splitting those strands. And we're going to come out just underneath where this will land once inside. Going into the center of the rope, trying to avoid splitting the strands, push through, and we're going to actually pull it out on the other end. Again, trying to avoid splitting strands. The taped end will go through the top, and these tools have a small hook on the top, which you will use to catch the material and help send it down into the core. Because it's attached on that hook, you will need to pull it all the way out to the end, lift it off, and pull it back inside. A little bit more tricky to work with as you can see but I really do like this material now again we're gonna do the other end folding at your other marked point measure your loop I'm doing it at four centimeters for my necklines taking again the larger tool we're gonna first go into the long end with the short piece just under that mark and then underneath again. Now this is where the small piece of rope is gonna come into hand, or come in handy. Once you've made a loop, it's really hard to get it through this hole unless you stretch it much bigger, which of course is also possible. But what I like to do is to push open the hole like normal, taking the small rope, feed it through your first loop, and then feed it through the tool. And then take the tool off and then using the rope pull that piece through like so and again we're going to feed this inside the core of the rope using the smaller tool pulling it all the way through pulling it off the hook and stretching it Thank you guys for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video about how to make your own lines. Please let us know in the comments what it is that you use and we will see you guys very soon. Bye.